a mighty man of God down in Harlan County, down in Wallens, and uh, got to meet him again. And, uh, and it had been a lot of years, and, and boy, we just enjoyed his ministry, his preaching, preaching on stuff. And uh, it's it just awesome. Then enjoyed praying with him, and he'd be a, a great man to hang around. But I, but I appreciate Brother Houston. God bless you in the Lord. Number two is expect good things. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Expect goodness, uh, grace, and favor. It says, goes before me. My angel shall take you to the place I've prepared. My angel shall go before you. We have angels on every side. It says, if God be for us, who can be against us? He said, I'll give my angels charge over you. I will tell my angel to watch over you, number one, to protect you. Number two, to provide for you. Number three, to reveal my word to you. And number four, to speak my secrets. You know, folks, we have a, a mighty angel that's, that's watching over us. And he's there to protect us. I know there's times that he has protected me. And you know, I look back, even when I were, was lost, there were times that the divine hand of God had intervened and moved upon my life. Aren't you glad that God has a has a a protection program then there's things that that happen in our life that just overwhelm us and we we can't even explain why but all we know is that we can trust him and folks there's things too big for us things that we can't change and we have to trust God with things that's too big and when we do that we're saying Lord I trust you that you're going to work everything out to your good and to my glory, I mean, to my good and your glory, you're going to work it out and it'll be all right. Number three is to accept blessings. Let people bless you. And a little thought, I'll take that blessing. Let people speak good of you. Uh, God works through me. Let people treat you good. And a little word, thank you. You know, it's a word you, you hardly hear very much, but you know, even my wife, she'll do little things. And I said, I thank you. On the way to Middlesbrough the other day, and I said, Lord, uh, said uh, to my good wife, thank you for, you know, for my clothes, you know, keeping me uh, clothes clean and, and keep me looking good and different things. I mean, it's important today that we have that little word, thank you. Thank you. If someone opens the door for you, say thank you. If somebody uh, helps you do this, say thank you. That, that's that's a, a small word, but it means so, so much. God already has provided all our needs. We need to learn to ask and then receive. We receive by giving God thanks. Lord, I thank you for my health. God, it is your will for me to be in health and to prosper. Lord, I thank you for my needs being met. Lord, you said you supply all my needs, and I thank you. Lord, you said you would make you would make a way when there seemed to be none. Lord, you said that I would not want or I would not have lack. So, you know, folks, we have, I know there's times that we have lack and, and different things, but God has promised to supply our need, and if we're people of covenant, you know, there's a place in the Christian walk, and just like in Israel, the, uh, the land of Egypt was a place of not enough. The desert was a place of just enough, and then the Canaan land was a place of more than enough. So, you know, God, there's seasons that's in Christian walks. I remember a time when I, I lived in a land of not enough, I lived in a land of just enough for a, for a season. And thank God, you know, for, for the tithe, giving God his, his part, then you get to live in a land of more than enough. I expect blessings because God is my father right now. You know, there, we see people that, that get into trouble and they call upon God. But folks, when, when he's your heavenly father, and you're living in a place. He said, if you abide in me, my words abide in you. You can ask what you will. If you'll continue in my word. And folks, to Joshua, he said, this word shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate both day and night. So shall you make your way to prosper. So shall you have good success. I expect blessings because God is my father right now. And I thank God for the past 30 years, he's been my heavenly father. And he's been a, a refuge for me, a fortress to me, and I thank God. I expect favor because God is my father right now. And folks, when we're in, in the presence of God, and they, they, he's talking about that little song, uh, Troubles Vanish in the presence of Jehovah. But when God is our father, we can expect blessings. We can expect favor. We can expect healing. 
because God said he would take sickness away. There's a great promise in the Old Testament, but also it's, it's followed up in the New. If the Old Testament was good, how much better is the New Testament? In the Old Testament, if they pray and get 15 years added, then we should ask for 30 or 45 years to be added to our life. But I expect healing because God said he would take sickness away. You know, there's a place in God. There's a place when her faith or faith level gets so high. You know, to Brother Mike first has said that he hadn't known sickness, hadn't been sick in years and years and years, and said the enemy attacked him. His blood pressure just went, I guess, to the moon. But said God gave him a deliverance. And folks, God is a delivering God, and, and, and he, 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 he's not promised that we won't have trouble. He ain't promised that, that we wouldn't have sickness, but he's promised that he would make a way that he would give us healing, Miss Tina. He's promised that as sickness comes that we can call upon Jesus by his stripes. We were healed. By his stripes, we are healed. Living free in every trial, I trust him.